today we'll be introducing several new verbs to deal with manipulating data. We'll first learn about four verbs that help us join two data frames together when those two data frames contain overlapping information. We'll then learn how to reshape data using spread and gather. Spread helps us take one column and convert it into multiple columns. So we often think of it as taking long data and making it wide. Whereas gather takes multiple columns and gathers it down into one column. And so we think of taking a wide data frame and making it long. And both of those are thought of as uh, reshaping verbs because they alter the number of rows and columns in the data frame. So once you've applied either spread or gather, the actual dimensions of your data frame are different than what they were before. Separate, separate rows and unite are, way, are verbs that we use to handle situations where one cell contains multiple pieces of information. And when that happens, we can use separate or separate rows to kind of get that out. And then occasionally we have a situation where uh, we wanna look at data that's less granular than where it is currently. For example, imagine that you've got you know, first name and last name and we wanna combine them. Um, and that's where Unite comes in which helps us combine multiple columns into one column. Imagine we work at a health system and we have two data frames. One data frame that contains information about our patients and one data frame that contains information about our doctors. The patient's data frame shown here has six patients with six unique patient IDs. And the doctor's data frame here has six different doctors um, and their name and the number of years that they've been in practice. The first question I have for you is, why not store these data in a single data frame? The main reason not to do that is that you'll actually have to duplicate information in multiple places, which can lead to errors, not just in that the data might be inconsistent between rows, but also that if you have to go back and update it, you'll have to update the same piece of information in multiple places. So imagine that the patient's data frame actually also had the doctor's name and the number of years in practice attached to it. You could imagine that if that doctor uh, had now practiced for an additional year, you'd have to actually go ahead and update the years in practice, not just in one place, but in several places for each patient uh, to which that doctor was assigned. The questions you might ask when you have these two data frames are, which patients have no doctor? You also might want to know which, pa which doctors have no patients. And you'll also notice if you look closely that the doctor ID variable is actually present in both the patient's data frame and in the doctor's data frame. And so I want you to think a little bit about why that is. The answer here is that in the doctor's data frame, the doctor ID is actually the, what we call the primary key, which we'll get back to in the next slide. Whereas in the patient's data frame, the doctor ID is the foreign key, and the patient ID is the primary key. The terms primary key and secondary key come from the world of relational databases. And while we won't cover relational databases in much detail in this class, it's worth understanding these terms just because they're really important when you decide to join two different data frames together. The primary key refers to a column that is an identifier that's actually unique for each row in that data frame. Whereas the foreign key, while it also serves as, as an identifier, typically is a pointer to a primary key in another data frame, which means that the foreign key is typically not unique for each row in the data frame where it's being referred to as the foreign key. So if you look at the two data frames here, in the patient's data frame, the patient ID is the primary key because it's unique for each row in the data. Whereas the doctor ID isn't unique, and so it's the foreign key. So if you notice for patient bill, which is the first row of the patient's data frame, the doctor ID is one. And for Jill, the doctor ID is also one. And all this means is that both Bill and Jill have Dr. Elsa as their doctor. If you look at the doctor's data frame, you'll notice that 
The doctor ID is the primary uh, key here because it's unique to each value. There is no uh, foreign key in the doctor's data frame because in this case, the patient's data frame uh, is kind of the main data frame in a sense, and the doctor's data frame is information just about the doctors and not about any other variables. If you want to combine two data frames, there are really four ways to do it, and each of the four ways is referred to by one of the verbs that we'll be covering. If you want back information on all patients and all doctors, including information that's linked between patients and doctors, the way to do that is by doing a full join. If you want information back on all patients and linked information for doctors uh, that are assigned to those patients, then that's called a left join. If you want information on all doctors, including the patients that are assigned to them and the related patient information, the way to do that is through a right join. And if you only want information for those patients who have doctors and those doctors who have patients, then the way you do that is by doing an inner join. Notice that the left join and right join are kind of artificial in the sense that it just depends on which item you place on the left and which item you place on the right. But for the sake of this class, we'll typically be placing the patient's data frame on the left and the doctor's on the right. And so these terms will apply the way they're displayed on this screen. Let's say I want all the information on all the patients and all the doctors, including overlapping information. I'm displaying the patient's data frame on the top left and the doctor's data frame on the bottom left. And what I want back is a data frame that has all of the overlapping information for all the patients and all the doctors. The way I do that is by doing a full join. In SQL, this is sometimes also called an outer join, but in R and in dplyr, this is called a full join. So we'll stick to that terminology. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. The main way that we would do this is full join, parentheses, patients, comma, doctors. And notice that this is how we specify, you know, what's on the left and what's on the right. The first argument is the data frame on the left. The second argument is the data frame on the right. There's a couple of other ways that we could say the same thing using pipes. If what we were piping in happened to be the patient's data frame, then we could just say full join doctors. And what that would do is insert the patient's data frame into the first argument of uh, the full join function, such that it would just say full join patients, comma, doctors. Or if we happen to be uh, piping in the doctor's data frame, which needs to go on the right um, for us to have the equivalent result, we could also have said doctors, then full join patients, comma, dot, where the dot tells doctors where to go. And is part of uh, the syntax when it comes to piping that we won't use much, but as an option for you if you want to insert what's coming on the, um, into the pipe to a, any place other than the first argument in a function. So let's step back from the code from, uh, for a second and see what the output reads as. So as we expected, all of the patients are there uh, in the data frame, all six of them, and all six of the doctors are there. But you'll notice that there are three doctors, Dr. Dory, Dr. Nefario, and Dr. Who, who don't have any patients assigned to them. And so the patient ID and patient name uh, columns are blank for those patients or have missing values. Similarly, Bob does not have a doctor assigned. And so the doctor ID, doctor name, and years in practice are all uh, missing for Bob in the joined data set. You'll also notice that Dr. Elsa is assigned to two patients, uh, as is Dr. Shrek. And so if you look in this join data set, you'll notice that Dr. Elsa's name appears twice, Dr. Shrek's name appears twice, and their years in practice appears uh, for each of those rows as well. 
Now let's say you're carrying out an analysis of patients and you actually don't care about those doctors who have no patients assigned to them because they're not of interest to you. You only care about the patients, uh, which are your primary analytic population, and the doctor information for those patients. How would you get back the doctor information for all of the patients in the patient's data frame? The way you do that is using a left join, because what the left join is saying is, for all patients, which is the left data frame, give me all of the doctor information for those patients and combine those together. So when you do left join patients comma doctors, what you get back is a data frame that has all of the patients just the exact way it was present in the patient's data frame, with the only difference being that the information from the doctor's data frame has been added as columns on the right. And again, this is called a left join because the data frame on the left is completely preserved. And the only changes that kind of happen are to the data frame that's being added on the right, where any rows in the right data frame that don't match the left are discarded. So you'll notice that doctors Dory, Nefario, and Who don't have any patients assigned to them. And so because you've left joined with patients as the data frame on the left, doctors Dory, Nefario, and Who have been discarded from this data frame after you joined it. However, if there was a doctor who had two patients uh, in the patient data frame, they're still listed twice. And if there's a patient who doesn't have a doctor, their information is still listed. So when you're doing a left join, the left data frame takes priority and is preserved, and only the information on the right is tacked on where it matches items on the left. If you were doing an analysis of all the doctors, you actually wouldn't want to focus on any patients who have no doctors assigned because they're not relevant to your analysis, but you would want to focus on doctors who have patients or who don't have patients because your unit of analysis is the doctors. Assuming that the patient's data frame was on the left, meaning it was the first argument, and doctors was on the right, and doctors takes priority, the way you would combine these two data frames is using a right join. What the right join basically says is just the opposite of the left join, which is that the data frame on the right is the one that takes priority. And so all of the rows from the data frame on the right have to be preserved and have to be present in the data. Any data frame, or sorry, any rows in the patient's data frame, which is on the left, that match the doctor's data frame are kept, and any rows in the patient's data frame that don't match the doctor's data frame are removed. And so in this case, the only row that got removed is Bob, because Bob doesn't have a doctor assigned. And so the doctor ID didn't match uh, anyone in the doctor's data frame because it was a missing value. And so Bob basically got dropped from this data set. And again, there's two different ways of writing right join. Although you can kind of combine the joins with piping functions, I will say that my preference is typically to use the first option so that it's completely clear to you when you're doing a left join or right join, which item is on the left and which one is on the right. Finally, if you want data only on those patients who have doctors and those doctors who have patients, the way you would do this is using an inner join. An inner join basically makes sure that there is all of the data is linked between the two data frames, such that there are no doctors without patients and no patients without doctors. So as you can see in this combined data set, several rows got dropped. On the patient's data frame, um, Bob is not in the combined data set because Bob doesn't have a doctor. And in the doctor's data frame, doctors Dory, Nefario, and Who aren't in this data frame because they don't have any assigned patients.